North Korea began sending hundreds of workers to Russian-controlled regions of Ukraine in exchange for shipments of industrial equipment and energy supplies. The country is also ready to send 100,000 soldiers to help Russia as part of Milita Pyongyang said that North Korean workers could help rebuild Ukraine, as media sources reported, the North Korean authorities have already selected workers to be dispatched to the pro-Russian Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. North Korea's leadership seems eager to send their compatriots to Ukrainian territory while the war is still raging. The North Korean authorities had instructed companies operating in Russia to get ready to send workers to the war zone. Pyongyang began to send more than a thousand workers to the Donbass region. North Korean companies in Russia have until the end of the month to provide Pyongyang with lists of workers to dispatch. In addition, Pyongyang has selected people inside the country to send to the Donbass region. North Korean officials said, the Overseas Construction Leadership Bureau, the Ministry of Fisheries, and the Ministry of Railways have assigned some workers on the waiting list to war areas in Ukraine. Those are the same organizations that recruited most workers dispatched to Russia in the past. North Korean authorities already sent more workers to different parts of Russia to earn foreign currency even after closing the national border to block the influx of COVID-19 in January 2020. Given the current difficulty of sending North Korean workers overseas in large numbers, the North Korean authorities have apparently been sending them to Russia in small groups. Amid reports that workers dispatched to the war zone at the request of the Russian government will be given grueling and dangerous work for little pay, considerable numbers have reportedly been reluctant to go. Furthermore, reports of plans to dispatch military personnel to Donetsk and Luhansk then emerged from the media outlets of the republics, before being more widely publicized on the Channel 1 Russia State TV channel. Although yet to be confirmed, the possibility of North Korean forces being deployed in some capacity to Ukraine, albeit likely not as many as the 100,000 personnel that reports from the Donbass have claimed, remains significant based on prior trends in Pyongyang's overseas force deployments and the benefits it, the contested republics, and Moscow itself could gain. For North Korea, contributing forces to the Ukrainian war effort would be far from unprecedented, with the country's armed forces having fought in Vietnam against the United States and in multiple Middle Eastern wars primarily against various U.S.-backed parties. North Korea has lent assistance to U.S. adversaries without frontline personnel contributions in multiple further conflicts, ranging from the South African border to the Iran-Iraq War. In the latter, Pyongyang provided the Iranian army with the longest-ranged artillery in the region as well as the bulk of its ballistic missile arsenal. Should Pyongyang believe its forces can significantly influence the war's course in Ukraine, it could go a long way toward keeping Western attentions focused on Eastern Europe, and thus away from East Asia, while further placing pressure on the United States, with which it remains officially at war. Participation would also provide experience against Western allies, which have received tens of billions of dollars worth of equipment from NATO and are operating with American intelligence, advisors, and training. Any North Korean deployment would likely be financed by Russia, potentially facilitating better access to Russian commodities, military hardware, and other economic support. An experience operating alongside Russian forces could also be highly prized due to the shared borders and common adversaries both face in East Asia. The extent of the presence and operations of Western forces in Ukraine was more recently highlighted in a report by the French magazine Causeur, citing intelligence sources from the country, while Russian government sources have consistently alleged an even deeper level of Western involvement in frontline operations. The result could well be direct clashes between North Korean and Western personnel, with the former officially operating as volunteers and the latter as part of a stealthy network in supporting roles or as military contractors. North Korean and U.S. forces have fought on opposite sides of multiple conflicts in the past, most recently in Syria. Ukraine is potentially the latest of many wars, and one of the largest in terms of North Korean contributions, where the two have faced off as part of their ongoing 70-year conflict. On the other side, South Korea is sending 1,000 tanks, more than 600 pieces of artillery and dozens of fighter jets to Poland, in part to replace equipment donated to Ukraine to help Kiev fight the Russian invasion.
The country is planning to complete the military preparation with the help of South Korea. Warsaw will purchase 980 tanks based on the South Korean K-2 model, 648 self-propelled K-9 armored howitzers, and 48 F-A-50 fighter jets, the ministry said. The agreement expected to be officially announced in Poland. The first 180 K-2 tanks, made by Hyundai Rotom Company and equipped with autoloading 120mm guns, are expected to arrive this year, with the production of 800 upgraded tanks starting in 2026 in Poland. The first 48 K-9 howitzers, made by Hanwha Defense, are also expected to arrive this year, with delivery of a second batch of 600 due to start in 2024. From 2025 these will be produced in Poland. The ministry said these armored vehicles would replace the Soviet-era tanks that Poland has donated to Ukraine to use in its fight against Russia. The ministry's comments to CNN come after Polish Defense Minister Mariusz Blazak tweeted on July 22 that the deal would significantly increase Poland's security and the strength of the Polish army. CNN has reached out to the South Korean Defense Acquisition Program Administration and the arms manufacturers involved for comment. Chun in bum a retired South Korean general, said the deal with Poland is Seoul's single biggest weapons export pact ever. He also praised the weapons involved. He said, the K-9 howitzer is probably the best artillery system in the world, rivaled only by the German system. The F-A-50 is a combat version of the T-50, which has gained a reputation for being the best trainer in the world inventory. The K-2 tank in its latest version will be better than anything South Korea has to date. The arms deal had its roots in the administration of former President Moon Jae-in, who sought large foreign contracts to boost South Korea's defense industries. Moon's successor, President Yoon suk yeol who took office in May, also wants to push such exports, but the war in Ukraine increases the geopolitical stakes for Seoul. The profitable arms deal with Poland, a NATO member, means South Korea will be expected to share the burden for defense of the international order. Washington and NATO will expect Seoul to increase assistance to Ukraine and maintain sanctions against Russia, even if doing so comes at some cost to the South Korean economy. Since joining NATO in 1999, Poland has become a key member of the 30-member alliance, and has been purchasing US-made military equipment, including Abrams' main battle tanks and F-35 stealth fighter jets. Poland has also become a big backer of the government in Kiev following Russia's invasion, making deals to send more than 200 tanks and self-propelled howitzers to Ukraine. During a visit to Seoul in May, the Polish defense minister said the war in Ukraine showed Poland's urgent need for South Korean arms. Minister said, we talked about accelerating the deliveries of these weapons to the Polish army. Why is it important? Because of the war on our eastern border. It is important for the Polish armed forces to be equipped with modern equipment, proven equipment, and such as the equipment produced by Korea. He said South Korea and Poland faced similar security situations and therefore needed similar weapons. He added, why is Korean equipment proven? Because Korea has the challenge of its northern neighbor, who also conducts an aggressive policy, so our task is to equip the Polish armed forces with modern equipment. Equipment that will deter the aggressor. Such equipment is undoubtedly produced in Korea.